What's up, everybody? Good morning, good morning. Did everyone have a good Thanksgiving? Awesome, awesome. I did. I'm still recovering from all the food I ate and all the football. Man, who had a good weekend? Yeah. Hook them horns. None of you saw it, but I did. It was fantastic. Um, Man, what an incredible weekend it is. And I want to start a little bit differently than I normally start because today I got news. Actually, my wife got news yesterday of something very special that happened, um, I think yesterday. Uh, But two people that we dearly love and have been a part of our lives, Kelsey and Maya's lives, for quite some time now. Um, Erin Green, who's our director of our dream team. She's our dream team coordinator. And Sam Hitchcock, the guy with long hair that gets up here and and helps us in worship, they got engaged yesterday. So let's celebrate them. It's pretty awesome if you're watching online and you you better be. Um, I'm just kidding, but no, seriously. Um, We love you and we are so grateful uh, that you've cultivated your relationship in the house of God, pursuing God, and you found each other in it. And so we're excited to see what God has in store for your life and marriage. And so we wanted to celebrate that real quickly. And I also wanted to just get a a shout out to people who are watching online because, you know, a lot of people travel during the Thanksgiving holiday and, of course, there's been sickness and all sorts of stuff going on. So will you help me by welcoming our church family that's watching online today? Come on, church. We love you. And I also want to give a shout out to our dream team. Man, our dream team is, is, if you don't know this, Um, The dream team are the volunteers of New Life Church that really make New Life Church what it is. And so from setting up this thing week in and week out to our amazing kids volunteers who are literally engaging the next generation, helping them to love God and to love people, man, they're phenomenal. Let's let's give a shout out to our kids volunteers real quick, our kids dream team. And man, the worship and production teams, man, so many of them, some of them you see on stage, uh, but some of them go unnoticed, people who run sound and, and literally lead us into the presence of God. People are using their gifts, and maybe it even wasn't a gift at one point, but they just said, God, I'm available. I'll, I want to be a part of what you're doing. And, and so they stepped in to help make this possible. And, and, and I love the, the, the Bible verse. I shared this with the, the production and our worship teams this morning. That the Bible says in, in Psalm, I forget which one because there's a lot of them, uh, but it says that God inhabits the praises of his people. Uh, another translation says that God is literally enthroned upon our praising him, of our worshiping him. And so us gathering together like this to worship God, to sing of how good he is, man, is inc- incredibly powerful and important for our lives. And I want to shout out our production team, man. They, the people who put the lyrics on the screens, man. We have, you're in middle school, right, Jacob? Middle school kids literally leading us, the church online this morning, in worship because of you saying, God, use me, use my talents, use my time to, to worship God. And so, man, we've, we've got middle schoolers leading the charge this morning. Let's give them a hand. Man. It's amazing what happens when the church comes together to do things for God. It's just absolutely mind-blowing. Well, we're in this series called Make Room, and it's really important, I believe, for us to remind ourselves on a regular basis uh, that we need to live our lives with wisdom. We need to live our lives with, with, with wisdom that comes from God. A matter of fact, there's another psalm, I, think, I believe it's Psalm uh, verse 90, verse 12. I hope that's right. I'll look it up later. You can, you can check this. 90, verse 12, Psalm 90, verse 12 says, teach us, Lord, to count our days that we might have a heart of wisdom. Now, you might think, well, if I read that scripture, am I just counting like, okay, I got, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, no, no. What it's saying is, God, teach me how to make my days count. Man, how do I make the best of it? And it actually says that, that when we do that, when we, when we take God's teaching and we, we, we take into consideration, God, what do you want to do with our lives? Then he gives us wisdom on how to live our lives. Now, let me just say this real quick. Wisdom is different than knowledge. Okay, let me say that again. Knowledge, knowledge can be 
You can go to school, you can take classes, and you can get a lot of knowledge. As a matter of fact, I think most of us uh, in this era of humanity are probably overknowledged. That's probably not a word, and I'm okay with that. But we're over knowledge. Like we have at, the, at, the, at our fingertips every day, literally, I mean, you have Wikipedia on demand. You used to have to go to an encyclopedia. Most of y'all don't even know what that is anymore. But, but you can literally gain knowledge like that. But what most of us lacks and, and, and what really impacts our life, lives is wisdom. Now, wisdom, the Bible says, is the fear of God, the, res, rever, the, rever, the reverent, the reverence of God, the Bible says, is the start point of wisdom. What is wisdom? Let me define it this way. Wisdom is the ability to apply what you know. It's not that you just know it, it's that you actually can live it out. You actually understand what you're supposed to do and you then do it. And so when we're talking about this idea called make room, making margin in our lives, creating this gap between what's essential and what is necessary, we need to have wisdom in order to live our lives appropriately. And last week I shared this. That most people on their deathbed, they're not saying, like, if, if, if I were to go visit them in the hospital and, and, or, or you were to visit a loved one in the hospital and you were to ask them this question, like, what, what do you wish changed in your life? Like, what, would, what is your regret? What are the things that you wish you could do over again? And I, most of the time, I, I mean, I'm sure somebody says this, but most of the time they're not saying, man, I wish I just took that one business meeting. I wish I just had one more business meeting so I could make another dollar and man, that would have made this tremendous difference in my life. Or man, I wish I could just, um, man, I wish I could just get another boat, another, another house, whatever it is. They're not gonna say that. Almost every time you ask someone who's at the end of their life, and again, that's when you're most um, concerned with what did I do with my life? Did I make my days count? It's when it's most clear to us, man, did I do that or did I not? And, and so it's a sobering moment where we get to reflect and have, have inventory of what we did with our lives. And most of the time, man, we're thinking through like, man, I, I wish I would have spent time more with my wife. I wish I would have dated her more. I, I wish I would have spent more time with my kids and my family rather than running all over the place. Man, I wish I would have done this. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish I would have. And in order for us to live this life that God wants us to live, we need wisdom from God to teach us to count our days, to make them count, amen? And so that's what we're after during this series. And so you may have heard this story before, but there was a guy who had two Super Bowl tickets. Have you heard this story? Most of you wish that you were the guy who had the two Super Bowl tickets, right? Um, they're pretty hard to get. They cost thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Where, well, this guy, he had two tickets to the Super Bowl. He goes to the Super Bowl, and, 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 and all this take, all, the game is amazing, and about halftime, Man, the seat next to him is empty. He's got two tickets, and the seat next to him is empty. And, and by halftime, the people around him are like, what in the world? Like, this is the Super Bowl. Every seat should be filled. Like, that seat right there, it costs thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Why is that empty? And so a guy sitting behind this gentleman just decided, man, I'm just gonna ask him, like, what is going on? Why is the seat next to you empty. And, and, and the guy says, well, I got to tell you, my wife and I, we, we bought these tickets, something that we really wanted to do. This is a bucket list item for us. And, and, and she actually, she just passed away. And, and so the guy sitting behind him says, well, I mean, that's kind of honorable, like that, that you would honor your wife in such a way that, 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 that you would keep the seat open for her as, as if she were there. And, 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 and said, but, but, but man, it's thousands of dollars worth of ticket right there. Like you could have sold it on StubHub, but, but more importantly, like, man, you, do you have another family member? Do you have a son or a daughter, like someone that you love that you literally could have invited to experience the Super Bowl with? And, and he said, yeah, I probably could have, but they're all at the funeral. (laughs) 
That's funny, I don't care who you are. <laughs> but man, there's something about that story that honestly, it might not be that big of a, a, a thing in our lives, but we have all these things, all these distractions, all these things that seem to get in the way of the things that are really most important to us and so we need to consistently be reminded and, and, and allow God to teach us some things about the way we live so that we can get his wisdom so that we can live out this life the very best we can. And so I love, I, I love this passage of scripture, and I'm actually gonna skip through this. I have two slides here that I left on here from last week, and, I, and I'll share it just real quick. Uh, we're in a series called Greater, a season called Greater. You can go to that. I don't want to spend too much time on that, but you can go check it out if you're new here. And then every Saturday, right now, we have a new location. If you're new to New Life Church, let me just tell you, we're not going to be set up and tear down forever. Praise God, says our dream team, right? It's been six years of setting this thing up and tearing it down every single week, and some of us are a little exhausted of that. And so welcome to the party. Get involved in it. But and over the next couple of, of months, as we have projects, man, we want to be a part of building God's house where, where he dwells. And so we're inviting people to our new location at 515, 5115 Portage Road uh, every Saturday, 8 a.m. to noon. You can come anytime you want. We'll probably reach out through emails just to get an idea where people are coming. But please, 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 please get involved in, 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 in literally taking us to this next space. But let me show you this verse. That's not the verse. <laughs> Let me show you this verse found in Ephesians 5. Paul is saying, man, through God, the counsel of God, he said, man, you gotta be careful. Be careful then how you live. In other words, if, if you're gonna tell your, your son or your daughter, man, I want, I want you to consider the ramifications of what you're doing. You, you need to think about some things before you actually do them. And, and so Paul, God, through Paul is saying, man, you gotta watch out. Be careful because if you do this wrong, it's gonna mess you up and it's probably gonna mess up your life and you might get at the end of it and go, man, I have a lot of regrets and I don't want that. So be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. That's what we're after. God, teach us wisdom. Making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Now, what does that mean? It literally means that we live in an evil, fallen world where there's lots of things that are trying to distract you and I from God and from God's purpose. Uh, can anyone relate? Like, like, I don't know if I have to like belabor the point of, man, there's something happening in our world that, that literally wants us to take away, take us away from God and, and the goodness of God and who he is. It, it's happening. And, and so what we've got to do is we've got to make the most of every opportunity. Now, the word there, if you study the, the, the Greek language that the, the New Testament was written in, the word for making the most of every, top, every opportunity is literally uh, the word redeem. It, it means to buy back. It means that, that something was lost, something was stolen, and God wants to redeem it. God wants it to be bought back. He wants it to, to be brought back to what it should be like, to the way it should be intended. And, and so this isn't, listen to me, this, this verse and this idea of redeeming and redemption, this isn't just a, a life about the life that you, a, a word about the life that you live. It's literally about the life that you and I get to live because of Jesus. That the Bible literally says that, that you and I were bought with a price. That because of sin, we are separated from God the Father, the Holy Father. Sin separates, it causes a, a cosmic chasm between you and I, relationally between God. Because of sin, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. So the reason that you and I die, both spiritually and physically, is because of sin. Now, we could spend a whole lot of time talking about how you and I sin, but I hope you realize that you are a sinner in need of a savior. And even in this word, redeem, is literally encapsulates the entirety of our faith. That in spite of our sin, even before, listen, the Bible says that before you and I even sinned, Christ died for us. Think about that. 
Think about before you even said that white lie, before you manipulated anything, before you started trying to, to, to rob and steal and kill and adulter, have, have adultery and lust and, 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 and all the myriad of things that we do that are sinful in the eyes of God, before you even did it, Christ said, you know what? I forgive you, I'm gonna die for you, and I'm gonna buy you back with my own life, blood, and death. That's good news. And, and so you gotta understand something that when you're careful, when you have wisdom, if you want to redeem your life, redeem your time, you have to realize that it comes at a cost. Like, like it's not just gonna be easy. It's actually gonna be hard. Why is it gonna be hard? Because the days are evil. Because there's a, 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 there's a, there's a, a God, a little g God of this world that is literally trying to hijack and kill and destroy your entire life. And so we gotta be careful. We, we, we gotta be concerned. We gotta seek God so that we can live not just as unwise, but as wise. And here's what happens when we do. Therefore, we're not gonna be foolish. We're not just gonna do what everybody else is doing like the world does, but we're gonna understand what the Lord's will is. How do we understand that? It's when we put our spiritual lives first. Let me put it this way. You are a spiritual being living a temporarily physical existence. The Bible says that you and I are created in God's image, that we are made in his image. Do you know what his image is? Now, Jesus is the, the visible representation of the invisible God, but God himself is spirit. He's an individual, invis, invisible entity. And so if we're made in the image of God, that, that we literally, the most important part of us isn't our physical life, our physical capabilities, our physical existence, it's our spiritual existence. And if we want our physical existence to have wisdom and to be lived to the best of its ability, then we've got to pay attention first to our spiritual life. Like we can't get all distracted. We can't, we can't get all consumed with the things of this world and just let it hijack our lives. We got to be careful to live wise and not be foolish. And then when we do that, we're gonna understand what the Lord's will is. And so over the next couple minutes, I'm gonna give to you five, five time principles. If you're taking notes, which I encourage you to do because note takers are what? World changers. Note takers are world changers. And so if you're taking notes, I'm gonna give you five principles about time that can literally change your life. Now, I'm just gonna say this out, out front. You probably know these principles. Like, like these things are probably not new to you. But if we're gonna live wise lives and not foolish lives, we gotta understand that we, we need to kind of come back to it. Like, like why, do you, why do you think that every year we come back to like New Year's resolutions? Like it's, it's right al around the corner, right? We're, we're all gonna come back and say, man, I'm, I'm 2023, I'm gonna get in shape. In 2023, I'm gonna stop, stop living in debt and over my means and I'm gonna get. And we come back to the resolutions, why? Because we need to be reminded how, of how to live wisely and not unwisely. And so I'm gonna give you these five principles Write them down, and the first is, is that time is our most valuable asset. It's our most valuable asset. Like, like all of us have the same amount of time, we, and, and, and how we choose to live it, it matters. And, and for some of you, you're like, man, I just wish I had more time. How many of you said that? Even this week, this, this week, man, I just wish I had more time. I just wish I had more time. To which God would probably respond to you, man, even if I gave you a 24 hour, 25 hour day and not just a 24 hour day, man, it, it still wouldn't matter if you didn't learn to live wisely. It doesn't matter if I gave you more if you don't know how to handle that which I give you. So our, we gotta understand that our, our, our most valuable asset is the time that we have, that's why we gotta count our days in order to make them count. The second thing we gotta understand is that we cannot manage time. We can only manage opportunities. There was this really smart guy, a Christian guy, his name was Einstein. 
Have you heard of him? He said that time management is an oxymoron. Like, like you can't manage time. We all have time. We all have the same amount of time. And you can't, you can't make it change. You can't get more of it. You can't get less of it. You can't extend your time here on earth. You can't manage time. You can only manage the opportunities that you have during the time that you have. This is very important. It's very different than trying to just say, man, I just had more time. I just, I wish I could get this right. And man, we, we've got to learn how to manage the opportunities that we're given. And I would argue um, that most of us, uh, we don't do a very good job of this. Like it, it's, this is why we need to be reminded, God, to, God, to, to live wisely and not as unwise because last week we talked about, right, we're after, we want the peace of God, we want the joy of God in our lives. How is that gonna happen if we learn to live the way God wants us to live? Here's the third one. We can't do everything. We, we, we cannot do everything. Now, my wife is running switcher today. She's back in the back, and I know, I've, I've had to apologize a lot for things that I say. Um, but she literally, she would do everything if she could do everything. Uh, she gets that from her dad. Her dad is a go-go guy, and he's an enjoyable guy, lovely guy. My wife is an enjoyable person, and she would do everything. How do y'all know, how much do you guys know that you can't do everything? You, you can't. And so let, let me, let me let's ha- can we have a family meeting for just a minute? Uh, I'm gonna check my notes real quick so I can, I can see what I actually wanna say here in this family meeting. <laughs> this point, we cannot do everything. Um, over the years at New Life Church, ow, you guys remember last week when I did all that kicking stuff? <laughs> my back is jacked. <laughs> I literally feel, never mind. Uh, what was I gonna say? Family meeting. Over, over the years, you guys have heard me probably say a lot um, to families in particular that you have to be very careful about kids' activities. And honestly, I've probably singled out sports more than any of them. But it's not just sports. It's piano lessons. It's, it's horseback riding. It's cheerleading. It's, it's, it's like, it's crazy, and here's what I want to, you to understand is, is that if you want a relationship with your spouse, you can't let your kid's schedule run your life. Let me put it this way. And I said this, I, I said this uh, a little bit last week that um, I don't even know the extent to which the, the pressure is on you parents to do all the things that you're, that you're being asked to do for your kids. I don't know because I, I have a four-year-old and a six-year-old and we're just, this game is just getting started for us. And, but what I do know is I've been in ministry for over 20 years and I've, I've watched marriage after marriage after marriage crumble. In this way, you'll lay up treasure for yourselves as a firm foundation for the coming age. What's that, eternity? so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. You want to live life that is truly life? You live it for God and you live it for others. Introducing people to him. Here's the third one and here's where we're close. We got to make room for relationships. God is a relational being. He wants to know you and he wants you to get connected into relationships that matter. And, And so reverence for God adds hours to each day. Remember how, you, how I said you don't get more time, you just get more wisdom on how to create the opportunities? Here's what God wants for you. He wants for you to have the richest relationships possible in life. How are you gonna get that? You're gonna make room with your time for the relationships that matter most. And so maybe even for some of you, as you're creating those lists, the to-do lists and not to-do lists, you're literally saying, man, I'm, maybe I need to, not spend as much time with these friends. They're not helping me grow and, and prosper and, and get to know God. They're, they're actually doing the opposite. They're, they're leading me away from God. 
And you need to get planted into the house of God with the people of God to get involved. We do life groups that do this. Hebrews 10, 25 says, let's not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. Man, this is why I call the pandemic a, a, a literal move of Satan. Why? What did it do? It separated people from each other. It removed relationships. Encourage one another. You need encouragement. And all the more as you see the day approaching, as Jesus is coming back for his bride. Do you wanna be prepared for the bride to, re, to, to, to be received? You are the bride, you're the church, the bride of Christ. Do you wanna be prepared? You gotta make room for renewal. You gotta make room for making an eternal difference. There's things that you're doing in your life, they're good. They just might not be the best. And I promise you, when you get involved in it, it will change your life. You get involved in the church. I wanna invite you to come to Discovery. It's the second Tuesday of, of next month at HQ. You can sign up at the, the lobby desk in, 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 uh, on the way. Man, make a decision now. Man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna attack the first of the year in 21 days of prayer. Right now, I want you to make the decision. Man, I, I might have some good friends, but maybe I don't have godly friends that are helping me to understand the word of God and that can pray for me and help me in my spiritual life. I want you to make a decision right now that when our life groups start next semester in January, you make a decision right now that you're gonna get involved in one. And for some of you, you need to lead one. Like God might even be speaking to you right now. This is how you're gonna make a difference. You're gonna invite people into your home to get around the word of God and to get around prayer and to make an eternal difference in the lives of people. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that the fear of you is, leads us to wisdom. God, right now, I pray that we wouldn't just have knowledge, that we wouldn't just be taking notes to receive knowledge that sounds good and, 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 and man, sounds like it could work. No, God, we pray that you would give us wisdom to be able to live it out. So God, I right now, I pray that you would speak directly to everyone who's in this room who is watching online. Man, help them to, to take inventory of their own time, that they can make the most of every opportunity. Bring to mind things that they're supposed to do. Bring to mind things that they're not supposed to do. And help us to make room for you. In this moment, if you're in the room and, and maybe you've never started a relationship with God, there's nothing more important. There's nothing more important to God. There's nothing more important to us as a church. We don't wanna just introduce you to us. We wanna inter introduce you to him. And he loves you more than anyone else on this planet. So much so that even because you're a sinner, he died to pay the penalty of your sin and to rise again to offer you forgiveness, mercy, and a new life. If you wanna receive God today, if you wanna put your faith in him, you've tried other things, you've, you've tried to put your faith in, in activities, you've tried to put your faith in your spouse or a girlfriend or boyfriend, you've tried to put your faith in, in things that you're good at, and they always leave you wanting more. In this moment, you have the opportunity to believe in God, to believe in Jesus, and to receive him into your life. It's very simple. Right where you're seated, with nobody looking around, I want you to take a step of faith. Basically, between you and God, on the count of three, I want you to raise your hand. It's just a symbolic nature of God. Here I am. I'm choosing to believe in you. I'm choosing to start a relationship with you. How do we do that? It literally means you, you turn from your sin, saying, God, I, I'm a sinner, I, I've done wrong, I've, and I'm in need of a savior. I'm in need of forgiveness. And the good news is that before you even were a sinner, before you even sinned, Christ died for you. On the count of three, you put your faith in him. One, two, Three, shoot your hand up and hold it. And God sees you in this moment. He wants you to experience 
his extravagant life, a life of abundance, a life of forgiveness, mercy, redemption, a life of purpose. From your heart to God, you can slip, slip your hands down. Church online, you can pray this prayer as well. Simply say, God, I choose to believe in your son, Jesus. I'm not putting my faith in myself any longer. I'm not putting my faith in the world's ways. I'm putting my faith in you, the author and perfecter of my faith. God, I pray right now, as I turn from my sin and turn to you, I pray that you would fill me with your Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, send me your Holy Spirit. Fill me even anew every day with your Holy Spirit. That the power that raised Jesus from the dead could live inside of me, change me, transform me, and help me to live not as unwise, but as wise. Jesus, I thank you for all that you've done for me. And I thank you that I have a relationship with you. I pray this in Jesus' name, amen.